Greetings and salutations, my friends. Welcome to a new episode of The Ramble. I'm sure a few of you might be expecting me to talk about the Liverpool-Leicester game, so I'm going to be doing that. I'm also going to give you a diet and smoking update. We're going to meet my cat, Molly, and we're also going to give you sort of basically a sort of channel update, see what's going on with the channel, how the growth is, what new videos to expect, and all that good stuff. So let's get straight into it. I need to make an intro at some point. So the first thing I want to quickly cover today is the fact that there's a strange noise. Not in a ghostly way, just listen. I'm hoping you can hear that. I can't really hear it my headphone in. But I've noticed it the last couple of days on my videos, there's been a just a humming background noise. I've discovered what it is, and it's called dog hair. My computer needs cleaning. Yeah, I was just looking. Yeah, definitely needs a, a blowout. Um... It's, uh, yeah, the, uh, three dogs and two cats and humans and stuff tends to clog computer. There's no escaping it. I need to go and fix that. So it'll be fixed for tomorrow's video. I'm going to go and do it after this. Right, let's get on to the proper content. So the first thing I want to talk about today properly is the diet and smoking update. Um, if you don't know what I'm doing, basically I'm dieting and cutting down smoking, obviously. It wasn't like a update to see how well I'm getting with starting smoking. That would be silly. Um, so with the diet, as I explained before, it's just a case of moderation. I'm not going to change the diet crazily and stuff. I'm just eating a little bit healthier meals, smaller portions and snacking less at night. That's basically it. Really simple. Something that I know I can continue rather than just going so strict diet that you end up blowing out and put it all back on. So this week's diet update is I lost one and a half pounds. Very happy with that. My goal is a pound a week. Is It will be perfectly fine. It's not some drastic diet. So I'm really, really happy with that. If you're on the diet train with me, let me know in the comments how you did in the weigh-in this week. Hope Good luck to everyone. Um, and also, this is the first week of um, stopping my smoking. So this is going to be a sort of long-term thing. Because um, I decided the best for me was to basically phase it out rather than doing patches or just going cold turkey and stuff like that. It's just to phase it out. And the first step of that basically was that I said I would, I was going to put my tobacco basically because I'm lazy, put my tobacco other side of the room in the cupboard. So every time I wanted to roll a cigarette, I had to physically go and get it. That didn't last long, but there's a reason why this is my little box that I've been using, the <coughs> dusty box <coughs> um, for my tobacco. And the reason why I haven't done done that for very long is because just the fact. <coughs> Excuse the dog, somebody's just home. I, should, I always record these videos when somebody's arriving home. Great. The main reason this is working... Hang on one second. Oh no, they've stopped. Uh, uh, Loki, enough! Come on! Um, the reason that I didn't need to do the box thing was just the fact that counting my cigarettes and just paying attention to the fact that when I'm rolling a cigarette, because you know... If you're a smoker, you can automatically do it. You can kind of, without even thinking, you're sitting at your computer or whatever, just roll a cigarette and you're smoking a cigarette and you don't even realise. And I worked out, I think, roughly before I started this scheme, I was on about, I was, uh, rollies, I was on about sort of 12 to 15 a day, right? And since starting this, I'm smoking, um, for the last week that I've been doing it, I'm smoking seven a day. So I, I'm, I've almost half my intake just by, at the end of each day, writing down how many cigarettes I've had. And that just makes me pay attention to the fact. And it just goes, actually, I don't want a cigarette. You know, I'll stick it down to it. And the idea is over the next few months is just, just to gradually phase that out. I'm not in any rush. I'm just going to, you know, if, if, if I can drop that by one every month, then that would be fantastic. I'm not, not in any rush. But I've already halved it. And I don't feel any different. It's just... You know, those excess cigarettes were just habit more than, you know, my brain wanting nicotine and all that good stuff. So very, very happy with the diet and the smoking this week. Delighted. Now let's get on to the fun talk about Liverpool Leicester. So last night, Liverpool played Leicester, managerless Leicester. And um, yeah, Liverpool lost 3-1. I'll mention Liverpool first because I actually want to talk about Leicester. So I mentioned Liverpool first. 
it's the because I don't need to say much. It's exactly the same as I said in a previous rant video where I said we have no plan B. We don't know how to play against a counter attacking teams, and Lucas isn't a centre back. All those problems exactly the same as they've ever been. So that's annoying. Um, I think you know just need to get better. Basically, we had sixty nine percent possession. As you, the more you have the ball, the naturally the further your back line progresses forward because you're putting that pressure on. You're putting that pressure on, and then they've got a really quick striker. Just punt it through to him and score goals. It, you know, Drinkwater's goal was obviously just a worldie, but but it, yeah, it was just the same old shit really, which is disappointing. What I actually want to talk about today is my anger at Leicester. Now. There's been lots of talk about Leicester fans talking to the owners about getting rid of the manager. And nobody knows for sure. So we're all just sort of kind of guessing and stuff like that. But there's no smoke without fire in my eyes. There's some You don't hear about this barely ever. When a manager gets sacked, they're just sacked. They replace them. You very rarely hear about all these rumours and stuff that all oh, the players have talked to the thing. So I think there is something there. I saw a awful interview with Kasper Schmeichel who I, th- or I really rate as a goalkeeper and he was asked point blankly did you go to the owners to talk about getting rid of Ranier and he was like we have no power over the owners you know as, a, as players we don't have any power and he's like okay but did you talk to the owners we have no power and he just kept saying it. he didn't actually say no I didn't talk to the owners which was just awful and the fact that obviously you know the owners have sacked the manager and then, so if you're those players, even more so than ever, you've got to prove a point that you were right in telling your owner that they should sack the manager. Because suddenly, it wasn't just that, you know, they won 3-1 or they scored goals and stuff like that. It was just the fact that they were running a shit ton more. If you look at the stats for yesterday's game, it was like the most sprints Vardy had made. And it was the most passing, and it was the most running about that all the players had made. And which is a massive part of the modern game. They basically just tried harder. And that is disgusting. The manager that got you the Premiership title. I'm not the biggest fan of Ranieri. I don't think he's the greatest manager. But the guy that got you the title, you half arse it so you start the season you probably think you're all up for it it doesn't go so well at the beginning of the season and you just don't care enough and that is disgusting not only to Ranieri but to the fans of Leicester that suddenly that guy that you don't like goes and then you're running about more and playing better go fuck yourselves Leicester players I hope I'm sorry to Leicester fans but I hope you get relegated this season because those players can go fuck right off you know, this, they lost Kante. He's a very good player. But they also spent quite a lot of money and bought in players. Overall, I'd say their team is better. And they kept Vardy and Mares, And suddenly they were shit players. Bullshit. That it, I thought it was just disgusting. I was really disappointed the way that um, the Leicester players have reacted. I thought it was really disappointing. And it's not because they beat Liverpool. Fucking every little team beats Liverpool. I've been a Liverpool supporter for like... 30 plus years I'm used to disappointment it doesn't it's kind of water off a duck's back I don't get that angry anymore than when Liverpool lose but I just think it's sad that the Leicester players suddenly out of nowhere are running twice as much and sprinting twice as much as they were the previous five games if you're at Ranieri at home he's one of the nicest guys in the world but I'm, I'm sure he's got a little Jamie Vardy effigy voodoo doll that he's burning and stabbing and stuff like that. Because you might, what, what are you going to think if you're Ranieri? It's horrible. Right, enough ranting about Leicester. Let me know your thoughts. You know, I, I, that's, that's just how I feel. You're welcome to disagree with them. Right, moving on. So the next part, I want to introduce you to our cat, Molly. I can think... Wait, we can go exclusively live to the Molly Hunt right now, to, our ex- to the handsome reporter, Loki. Hello, my friends. Welcome to our expedition. We are on deepest Northern Ireland here looking for the elusive Molly cat. Now, we think we've on the trail. We found some cat's hair. I was going to say cat shit, but that would be disgusting. It's in my house. OK, game breaker. Um, so here we go. I think we're on the trail. Let's have a look if we can see anything. We're getting deeper in here. It's dangerous territory now. I think we spotted something. Yes, we have spotted the elusive Molly cat. Dangerous. Ready to pounce at any moment. Or or just 
or just quite sleepy. In fact, I think she just doesn't give a shit. Right, that's enough. Before she attacks, let's get back to the studio. So that is our cat, Molly. She is amazing. She's 12 years old, almost 13 years old now. Um, she was um, got by, I, uh, by my girlfriend um, when she was a kitten. So she's had a 13 years, 12 years, whatever it is. <clears throat> and I think it was just basically from a litter of cats somebody at her work had had. Um, and they were getting rid of. Um, and when Curly went to see the cats, you know, you see all the kittens playing about. Uh, Molly was very much the loner. She didn't really play with the other kittens. She kind of did her own thing. Just a bit on, you know, a little bit weird, right? And that's proved to be the case. She's a very strange cat. An amazing cat, but very strange. Um, she thinks she rules the world, as a lot of cats do anyway. She she truly believes that she is king of queen of the world. Um, but she has this weird thing where she will come she's sometimes really cuddly like she'll sometimes walk in here of an evening jump on my lap and you'll be stroking her and she likes loves it and she's purring away and she'll be sitting there for 10 minutes and just loving it but then out of the blue she'll attack you for stroking her she'll just go fuck off <laughs> like that basically that was a perfect reenactment for stroking her or for talking to her and you're like you came here just get off if you wanted no more strokes get off get off but she doesn't. She just turns and just goes like that. But also, because she was a loner and she didn't play with the other kittens and her mum, she never really learned to play. So she is quite a playful kittenish cat, especially like like uh, tin foil balls and stuff, rolling them across the kitchen. She loves that stuff. But if you play with her sort of close up, she doesn't know how to play because she's so she plays with her claws like full on, and it's a painful um, play session. And I think that's part. A lot of it is when. A kitten is either taken away from the mum too young, because what happens is the kittens play, and you'll often see kittens jumping all over the mum and stuff. So if the kitten comes out with his claws, the mum gives them a smack or a bite or whatever and tells them off. So they learn not to use their claws, but Molly never did. She was never taken away from her family too young, but it was more so that she was always a loner. She never really did that when she was young. Um, but she's an absolutely superstar. She... Her and Midge have a love-hate relationship. It's mainly hate. Um, they, even though they've lived together for 12 years, they basically just exist next to each other. They don't really like each other. Um, they've never been cuddly together. Um, she was the first in the house, so I think she's always been resented when we brought Midge in a little bit. And he, occasion, very occasionally, not for ages now, they'll have a little scuffle, um, you know, very sort of small thing but most of them they just kind of stay out of each other's way she's fine with the dogs she kind of likes ruling over the dogs because unlike midge she's not afraid if they come up to her and sniff her ass or something she's not afraid to just give them a smack so they fear her a little bit and she loves that because she's queen of the world and it's like yes and she'll walk amongst them going meh, 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 like this all the time because she, she just loves it. But that is our cat, Molly. She's an absolute superstar. You saw her in her natural habitat. She loves that airing cupboard. It's a little safe spot. She's she's a little bit nervy uh, as a cat. And uh, so she likes having those safe spots. But that's Molly. And finally, I want to talk to you guys today about um, just the channel as a whole. How we've been growing. What sort of uh, videos are coming out and have come out? What sort of series we've got planned? All that sort of good stuff, just to keep you abreast of all the <laughs> <I said boobies. laughs> uh, all the information. Um, so, obviously, the backbone of the of the channel has always been and always will be the the football manager, and that we've continued with the journeyman. I think we're up to, was it episode twenty five of the journeyman now? I've just recorded twenty six today. And I re I'm still absolutely loving that series. There's no hint of boredom or like itchy feet to try something new. The, the, the joys of a journeyman series is that if you get bored of a club, you just leave. Whereas most, you know, a lot of most series are like, yes, I'm stuck with managing Liverpool. You know, I want to do something different. 
and uh, that's why I think it's it's sort of done so well and you guys seem to be really enjoying it we recently did the 10 year where are they now episode that got loads five what was it 5,800 views that video's on so that's like really really good um, also we've we carried on with the Batman the Batman series um, the Telltale series we finished episode one of which is a, th- a three in three parts um, of the Telltale we will be carrying that on I'm going to record some of more of that tomorrow the next episode will probably go live tomorrow night we're going to do the, the whole of the Telltale series so if you're enjoying that stay tuned that's a sort of smaller um, video series on the channel because it's something quite different so I know not all of you um, enjoy those sort of games but go check it out because they are quite fun um, if you're interested in that um, Motorsport Manager is an interesting one because the new DLC came out so we started a brand new se- I wanted to start again because um, we were up to episode 23 on my Motorsport Manager save, and I'd made so many mistakes and, and learnt so much that so I thought, actually, we'll start again with the new free DLC, which is the Create a Team mode, which I'm really good fun. I think I've horribly fucked it up from what people have said in the comments. I spent all my money on the first day of the season, and I probably should have saved some, because apparently you don't really get much more apart from sponsorship. So that's going to be really interesting. We're definitely going to carry that on. I thought about redoing it because I've made the fuck up, but actually... Let's just see where it goes. You know, it's good. Um, Also, we did a brand new Football Manager 2017 experiment. It's basically a copy of what I did for 2016, which is what is every Premiership team had no players. And because it was my favourite one from last year, it was so much fun. All sorts of random shit happened. I am going to do a part two to that. Lots of you have asked. I I was kind of already in that um, mind that I would make a part two of that video. So we're definitely going to make a part two of the... uh, um, what if episode and it will be in a, in the next few days I've also got some other experiments planned so that's they're going to start happening a little bit more now um, now we're sort of well into probably once the patch releases you know the January transfer update I'll start doing more experiments I've got a few in my head um, also just for the future stuff also um, Curly the girlfriend plays England manager is, is coming back it's just um, you know she works full time and works fucking hard so I don't really like sort of her coming home from work and then said, right, love, come on, let's record, record some episodes. I like to let her just relax and try and do stuff for us. So I think what will happen um, in the next couple of days, we'll sit down and do an evening session where we record maybe three or four episodes, but that will be back. Thank you ev- to everyone that's supporting that um, save because she was very nervous about doing that. So um, if you could continue doing that, that would be amazing. Also, we are doing a um, um, thing. Oh, a brand new series which is going to be Darkest Dungeon when the DLC releases in March. I'm not sure when in March it is, um, but we will be doing a full playthrough of Darkest Dungeon. If you don't have any idea or no interest or don't know what's going on, check it out because it is hilarious. It will be funny. Um, I'm going to... I'll, I'll need a lot of help with naming all my uh, group and party members. Obviously, Harry Owen's going to be there, and me and Curly, and maybe the dogs and cats will make them into humans as well. But th- it's a lot of fun. There's lots of RNG, which is like random shit that goes on, basically. Um, as for the channel itself, we're up to... Let's have a sub-update. Um, we're live sub-count. Um, we are on... Blah, blah, blah. 10,939 which is exceptional um the um um, over the last week or so the sub subs per day has dropped down um quite sort of not heavily but maybe about 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 20 30 percent and i think you know fm17 is not new anymore um that sort of thing i think is the sort of main culprit less uh, less people are watching fm17 now because it's been out for a while and I think that's just a natural occurrence. You get a peak when the FM comes out and stuff like that. Hopefully with one of the new series, that will really take off and maybe we'll gain some subscribers through that um, and all that sort of good stuff. Um, the last couple of days have actually been brilliant. Um, we got 75 subscribers yes, uh, the day before yesterday and then 52 yesterday, which is really good. I kind of, if I can get above 40 every day, that's kind of my basic goal. I think I need to hit about 40 a day to hit my 22,500 subscribers by the end of the year goal. So um, I need to try and hang on to that as long as possible because 
in a couple of months, FM17 is going to be even older. That's going to drop down more. So any, anything you guys can do to help out the channel is fantastic, whether that's, you know, just liking the videos and commenting, watching the ads, tweeting about it, or sharing videos on Reddit or with your mates. That is amazing. That all helps with the channel growth. Um, most of the uh, Loki Doki mugs have now arrived at their destinations, which is fantastic. We've had two breakages, which is really annoying because I was keeping some back um, to do giveaways. And I think I had three left. And so two I've had to send out again. I kind of did keep them back as well in case there was a breakage um even though we packed them pretty well i thought um and uh, so hopefully no more breakages and we'll have one to give away if if there is another breakage then i might just go and order five more and just do them as giveaways um i think that'd be quite good so if you didn't get a mug there will be the chance to win one soon i might do it on the random. i might do it on a random video so the, so the hardcore are the ones that spot it or something like that. It won't be a special giveaway video. So you just have to watch all my videos. <laughs> right. I think that's about it. Um, have I got anything else to say? No, not really. Um, oh, yes, one thing. I've just finished, as you may have know, I've just bought a PlayStation 4. And I've wanted to play the Uncharted series for ages. I've never, I didn't have a PS3. And so I got the collector's remastered edition of the first three and i've just finished the first one and i thought i really enjoyed it i hate fucking shooters on a fucking controller it feels sh just stupid but i'm getting used to it like mouse and keyboard so much better but i'm getting used to that that's okay and i quite enjoyed the story it was a little bit light i'd say but i like the action and the shooting was all good the mechanics um one of the things I didn't like was constantly having to swap weapons, run about, pick up weapons. Like, you'd clear an area and then zigzag run, picking up all the ammo and stuff. like. Constantly running out of ammo was not a fun thing. I can understand that parts of the game, but it was the entirety of the game, basically, where you were sort of scavenging for ammo. Just give us a, a section where we've just got loads of ammo or something like that. You can pick up a pistol, but it can only carry seven bullets and apparently you haven't got pockets. And also, the worst thing about the game was the ending. The final boss was just this horrible little QTE shit fest, to be honest, where you died instantly if you rolled the wrong way, and then you died instantly if you did something else wrong. And it's kind of trial and error, dying loads of times um, to sort of hit triangle square at the right time twice. And then I just thought that was a really shitty way of doing it. You could have had that sort of thing right at the end of the boss fight. But let me sh actually... Sh fighting for a while like the boss stage basically starts on this ship and you're sitting there and the boss comes out and he's got like four goons with him right and they're all trying to shoot you you can't really damage the boss there's no point you basically kill all the four du du dudes and then the boss runs off you go to the around the corner same thing happens four dudes kill them the boss runs off while he's shooting at you but there's no point in shooting him because you know he's not going to die until you get to the end bit and then you do that again and that was just a bit rubbish i would have just liked to you know uh, a good shootout with a boss like a normal game but he's just a bit tougher he's just a bit more accurate he's just you know that sort of thing rather than this sort of staged thing with a qt at the end i thought it was just rubbish but overall i'd give the game a seven, a steady seven. I think it was, I, I enjoyed it. Remember, this is like, I don't know, what was it nine years old or something now? Remastered, it looked very good. But remember, it's a nine years old game, so I will be playing Uncharted 2 in the next few days. Right, I'm done waffling. I need a drink. Thank you very much for watching me, guys. Hope you enjoyed the ramble. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.